Not Max. Can we start, sir? Yes, ma'am. We are live and uh, we start with the okay. uh, So, welcome and a very good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Kiran Yadav, Assistant Professor at KR Mangalam University. We are back with another enriching session on the topic, Careers of the Future. Joined by the expert panelist and speaker, Ms. Poonam Bhat. A brief introduction of her achievements she possesses. A science graduate with a master's in education and a gold medalist. She is an internationally certified global career counselor from the University of California, Los Angeles, and Univariety Singapore, and has successfully counseled students for national and international education. She is an author, storyteller, self-tutored psychologist, and an entrepreneur. She started her own venture and since 2017 has been successfully mentoring students across disciplines for gaining admission into their dream colleges. She is also a set verbal trainer and has effectively coached students for various competitive exams. Over her complete career span, she has been a placeful principal, corporate educational executive, and curriculum coordinator for ALS series of Apple Incorporations. Ms. Poonam is a certified holistic well-being therapist and a mindfulness coach. She is a member of the International Association of Therapists. Her specialization includes anxiety, anger, relationship, family conflicts, self-esteem, and life transitions. Today, we are here to have an interactive conversation on the topic, careers of the future. Career is a very important thing in one's life. Whatever career path we choose to follow, it will impact our life greatly. It is very important and crucial time for youth as they are in dilemma about which road to take because we know careers of the future are uncertain. The technology-driven world in which we live is filled with promises as well as challenges. As for the future of job depots, by 2025, people and machines will work the same amount of hours. Automation will displace around 85 million jobs mostly manual and repetitive roles. Now, our guest speaker, Ms. Poonam Bhargav, is ready to take us on a journey where she will give us valuable insights on what careers are there for future. So now, without further ado, let's get started. Ma'am, please take over. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kiran, ma'am, for those nice and kind words. And uh, I really liked the way you said 5 million jobs. And it's very crucial for youth to understand what we are heading toward. So, uh, and without much ado, like you said, let us first understand if we have to choose a career today, we should be knowing what the future holds for us. Like if a weather forecast department tells us that it is going to rain, we take care. We are prepared in advance for the consequences to follow. So if we take care of what is about to come, how many jobs are going to go uh, obsolete? How many jobs are going to be created? So we should have an understanding as to what skills we should be building, how we should be moving ahead in our decision making. Because we are living through a very fundamental transformation in the way we will be working with the new pandemic and the digital revolution that has now swept the nation and the world. So like you very rightly said, there will be so many jobs that will go out of uh, the industries. So, uh, you know, just want to add one more statistics. The International Labor Organization also estimated 300 million jobs at risk. 40% will not come back. And the ones that will come back will be entirely new. Now for those newer jobs, we need to have some skill sets. So I'm going to take us over this journey where we are going to understand how this landscape called the new work landscape, the new career landscape is going to change over a period of time from how you mentioned 2025 to 2030 and going forward. Okay, so let me start uh, with a little presentation. You can just let me know when you can, when you're able to see my screen and let's get started. And can you see my screen? Okay. 
So careers of the future, we would be talking about what does the future hold for us? How can we keep up with it? Let's explore some opportunities that are going to be coming our way and what should we bet our skills on? So what does the future hold for us? So I think she's already kind of said that so many million jobs are at risk, but they, these jobs will go extinct in the next 10 to 30 years. Because like she very rightly said, uh, Kiran ma'am rightly said that they will go extinct. So travel agents, taxi drivers, store cashiers, trade people and sales professionals, all the front end jobs are at risk because of the way technology has taken over. Now, apart from all the uncertainty for these jobs, there are, there are other things that we should be looking at. For example, technology appending man, absolutely. Because you know, from the time we were introduced to technology in 2000, uh, the start of 2000, we saw internet coming in. You know, we, we are only seeing growth from a floppy disk that stores data to now uh, cloud uh, storage. It, is, it, is, it has taken over, you know, man has been reduced to uh, something which is going to be dependent. And you said it's a technology dependent world and it's a technology dependent generation, right? Then obviously myriad of health epidemics will also create some kind of a revolution in the way we will be seeing the progress of careers. So we will see how the epidemics will open up a lot of jobs, which it did. Uh, selfies being sold at millions. And this is something which has just come up, you know, how uh, a newer kind of career has emerged, how this new generation has caught on with innovation and has come up with a different kind of career set altogether. So, but it is estimated that one in 16 workers may have to switch their occupations by 2030. You know, we used to say, there was a time we used to say that uh, uh, study, take a degree, because then that degree is going to support you for life. You will get a job for life. But if anybody could take leave and come back to work, they would find themselves outdated, like losing out on a skill set. But now the new normal is that while you are at a job without even having to take leave, without even taking leave for your MBA, when you are at your work, you will find that you are not trained for a certain skill set that is needed. So how we have to, while at work, we have to constantly look at education to support us because now education has become more of a lifelong process than it was before, than it was earlier because of the earlier ways of living and the newer ways the uh, scenario has come up with. So let's see, how can we keep up with future prospects? Like how do I uh, constantly upgrade my skill sets? So uh, let's first see that what technology is for the next decade. The trend I would bet on for the new decade which can really create disruption and create new business capabilities and extending uh, the technology beyond the current imagination line is quantum computing. But how do you create new hybrid computing models by taking the current digital computing and joining it with the quantum computing models and really imagine new business possibilities, solving really exponential uh, problems and use cases which currently are uh, out of imagination for the current computing market. From a disruption and an opportunity standpoint is artificial intelligence. It is technology that promises to help optimize and accelerate the efficiency of businesses and also the connection to customers. But at the same time, as an industry, it's our opportunity to be really cognizant. We've seen a lot of uh, algorithms and deployment of uh, AI in reality. However, that's uh, not really reached enterprise. So I expect in the next decade, enterprises will start to deploy some of these technologies and gain significant benefits in the business. I can say is by 2030, they expect 16% of uh, incremental GDP to be generated by, by such deployments. I think AI and IoT will have a major impact in the coming future. AI is already creating a big impact in healthcare industries. 
by 2030, healthcare systems will also be able to predict risk of diseases in individuals. And in fact, they will also be able to provide preventive solutions. So to me, the next decade is, is, is about variability, is about constant change and constant adoption, uh, pervasively across uh, industries, communities, and cities uh, of technology. Human centered design has a significant role in creating a sustainable world. Uh, for one, with human centered design being an agile approach to problem solving, it allows you to ask the right questions and really solve unmet needs, human needs, in a really unique and creative way. And I think we need strategic creative thinking in order to really start to pivot from how we are currently impacting our Earth and order to change it for the better. In the cybersecurity arena, you will see AI help manage the loads of alerts which we get to see in the manufacturing and supply chain. The whole convergence and IoT, OT, really bringing multiple changes, acceleration in the way services are delivered, where manufacturing is done, where product quality is managed, and how we consume various services and products in our daily lives. Big disruption, we believe, will be because of 5G. Suddenly on the mobile network, the speeds and applications will dramatically change and increase. The trend is really what I would call radical innovation. You know, starting at the, with the problem itself and designing innovative automated solutions to address it from the beginning. This really allows businesses and industries to keep up with rapid changes in customer behavior. And it actually results in a very differently skilled workforce that's more attuned to these types of changes and trends. Technologies that dematerialize and democratize information and resources at scale have always contributed to and will continue to contribute to the creation of a more sustainable world. Technology would be used for further good towards establishing the key goals which are defined by the Sustainable Development Goals also, which is people, planet, peace and prosperity. So these four will only happen when uh, humans are connecting at a very different level of giving back. And technology, I see, would be more and more utilized there. So that actually gets us to ask uh, lovely questions because we heard the importance of AI, we heard the importance of technology, and uh, uh, at the end we heard the four P's, people, planet, prosperity, and peace, and how technology will be able to integrate all four of things together. So uh, we have to accept and acknowledge the realities of the new normal and beyond. We now have, um, because of AI, you know, we have to recognize the importance of remote work. You know, more and more organizations are allowing remote work because they saw productivity while the pandemic was on and how e-commerce completely took over, you know, and uh, automation, ma'am, Kiran, ma'am, you started with automation, but we can see AI take over small, small uh, in, in everyday life. Like we continue to say, hey, Siri, Hey, Google, hi, Alexa, you know, we have a weighing machine on which when we stand, it just hi, doesn't give us weight. I think you've got the wrong assistant. So it was also like how they respond. So this is what automation is. This is what AI is. I just said the name and she's willing to respond to me. And AI has played a role where, like I was just mentioning, a, 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 a weighing machine is just not giving you your weight. It is calculating and giving your uh, muscle mass, your BMI, and so many other things. And how they spoke about AI in the world of healthcare. Imagine if uh, we uh, actually salvage the benefits of AI and understand the risks of illnesses even before they occur. So the, the possibilities are endless and they're all very useful for mankind. But how we are going to actually uh, let them not take away our jobs is the next thing. But it also gets us to the point that studying about these things and having a skill set towards this is going to be the new future. So, yeah. um, yes, yeah. ma'am, I would like to mention that Kia Mangalam University offers BTEC in computer science and engineering with artificial intelligence and machine learning with collaboration of IBM and Symmetrix. 
and we also provide the same assistance in the BCA program also. So our major focus for the program is to equip the students to acquire the ability to design intelligent solutions and to meet advancement and increasing demand of these skill sets. So over to you, ma'am. Okay, that's very nice to know. So, you know, uh, this is this is the new normal because see over here, because it is going to be needed in future. So there are university courses already around it to help uh, youth gain these skill sets and to move forward. Amazing. Thank you. Now, uh, the growth potential and unlocking flexibility. See, when the pandemic happened, the conventional school teachers didn't think that they would be able to keep up with their jobs because they had to immediately shift from a blackboard onto a computer screen. But they unlocked their potential and they learned technology. So technology is now not going to be left out of any discipline even law for that matter. You know, we never thought that a courtroom could be created in virtual reality. But when the entire world was on a lockdown, on the 14th of July, 2020, there was a Supreme Court hearing happening on virtual platform. So this is how we are going to uh, not let any obstacle come in the way going forward. And this gets us to understanding that what is the need and supply equation. If we are keeping a tab on how uh, uh, there is somebody who's raising a hand. So we'll come back to your question a couple later. Uh, yeah, so uh, there, is, there is a broader market condition because like I said, the need is going to be created for which the supply will happen. So if we are and ev in every area, the need has been attended by the supply mechanism. So we have to ask is, this my passion? Is this the best job for me for future and for sustainability? So that if my skill sets are getting obsolete, do I really take care of them and build on them? So we have now what we have done um, when we understand that it is a it is uh, we are in a flux. Okay, we are already sitting in 2022, and these all these reports, ILO, Future Work. All of these reports are talking about 2025. So we are, it is to be addressed. We can't sit back and relax because all the graduates now graduating from year 2022 onward would have to be in a workforce, which will be absolutely geared towards acquiring newer skill sets. Okay. And attending to the newer demands of the future. Uh, but the benefit of the audience, uh... I would like to say, if you have any query, any question, you want to add your thought process, so you have a chat box open. You can write whatever you feel like about the topic, okay, or your question. So you have a question and answer uh, 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 platform also available, and you have a chat box also available over here. So both the options you can use, right? And don't hesitate. We will try to answer, uh, uh, you know, your queries, questions, doubts, and we will address your comments as well. Thank you so much. Uh, so the whosoever had raised the hand, please, whatever is your query, comment, suggestion, whatever you want to say, uh, please feel free to write on the uh, chat box. So when we so now the time is to ask ourselves this question. But before that, what uh, we have to explore some opportunities. You have to explore uh, how uh, you know researchers have come up with things like that. Now the workforce will have four kinds of worlds, and it's a very beautiful concept. So first, let's also understand before deciding as to where I want to be. Let's let's see whether I belong to the red world or the blue world or, or the yellow world. Okay. So let's see that. We are in the midst of massive transformation from a worker perspective. If you look at the impact of automation, of robotics, of artificial intelligence, of machine learning, they are today having an impact on people's jobs. So we've tried in the Workforce of the Future study to position four alternative options of what work might look like. 
these four worlds are different in terms of whether they be collective or individual, they're different in terms of the types of businesses, whether you've got a very fragmented supply chain or whether you're a very integrated large business. In the blue world, corporate is king. There's a huge divide between the winners and losers. It's big capitalism on steroids. There will be a core group of individuals that work at the blue world, and then you're going to have what we would call a contingent workforce. So the blue world will buy in skills as and when they need them. Large parts of existing jobs will either be um, replaced or augmented by technology. They will be monitored and measured and managed very, very closely. Talent will be identified very early. Uh, and brought through the organization. The red world is all about speed and innovation. It's about getting like-minded people together. It's about bringing new ideas and new businesses to the market quickly. There's a need for nimble, adaptive talent that will go in and work on new products and be comfortable with pivoting onto the next opportunity. The red world is about things being developed and launched very quickly. Technology will obviously help to do that by connecting people wherever they are in the world to make sure that the best ideas and the best brains can be used whenever they need to be used. The prime focus in a green world is all about society and corporate responsibility. Workforces are attracted to that organisation because they believe in its mission. The technology that's used in the green world is used in a way to make sure that there's minimal impact on the environment and those around them, and that technology is used to enhance the scarce resources that those organisations have. In the yellow world, humans come first, and humanness is hugely valued. These are small organizations. They are thinking about social responsibility and fairness, but it's small, and it, it comes back to the, um, the artisans, the, the makers, the guild economy, um, a set of professional, like-minded people coming together um, to execute their craft. They won't be strongly affiliated with a particular employer. They won't be tied into nine to five. They won't be tied into five days a week. Technology in the yellow world really enables people with ideas or aspirations or somebody that wants to start their own business, it enables them to come in to that world at a much lower barrier to entry. If anyone tells you they know how this is going to play out over a five or ten year horizon, then I wouldn't believe them. No one should be trying to have a fixed plan beyond about six months. If the world of work does become more green or if it becomes much more red, how does my business today react? For existing workers, the, the key is flexibility and adaptability. So people need to think of themselves not as the job that they do, but the bundle of skills that they have. People need to think much more about lifelong learning. How do they stop and start and, and retrain at different points of their life? to be able to contribute in different ways. The reality is the future's here today, and organisations need to start thinking about what that future looks like for them. Machine learning in particular and artificial intelligence um, will help us do a much better job of workforce planning in the future. You can't sit back and wait for the future of work to happen. You have to plan for it today. Out of this video is very clearly adaptability and flexibility, Absolutely. right? Uh, so if uh, you have to, number second thing, what I saw in the video was that you don't have to wait. You have to plan, start planning from today itself. Third is this, that uh, whatever zone you fit into, blue zone, red zone, or yellow or green, whatever zone you choose, uh, nothing is fixed. Everything is going to change. And since everything is going to change, uh, you have to not see that what kind of skill sets you acquire in the university and you enter into the workforce, but you have to constantly upgrade and upskill yourself. Right, so a constant uh, challenge to learn, right? And so that you can survive. So here comes the real way, survival of the fittest. If you are able to equip yourself with the new technologies and new skills, you will survive. If you are not able to, and uh, certainly uh, 
because uh, the things are changing fast, so new kinds of careers are emerging. I see your next slide, which is talking of that only. So please uh, uh, explain what exactly is going to be the new kind of job scenario. <clears throat> yes, sir, thank you. So when you said survival of the fittest, I also want to say it is also uh, a situation where we are uh, poised at thrive to survive. We have to thrive to survive because um, as, as they showed the yellow world, you know, that's the world of humanism, humanistic uh, philosophy. It's uh, humans coming together. The pandemic has created that uh, kind of a world for us where collaborations will work, where smaller businesses will thrive. So uh, the job scenario is not only for the big fat fishes, the corporate world, which was the blue world. There are opportunities worldwide for everyone, whether they are technologically dependent or they are willing to adapt to technology or they are currently not in a zone of, because I was at one point in time very fearful as to whether technology will become my friend and whether I'll be able to conduct these kind of seminars and with these kind of presentations. But if I, if I was not willing to adapt, then I wouldn't be sitting here. So we have to decide that now we have to include technology in whichever discipline we are. You know, from, uh, so for example, see if this slide is talking about the following jobs, uh, that will be created by 2030. There, there are some of the jobs. To add one point over here, if you permit me, because uh, but though there are zones, you know, there is red zone, there is blue zone, there is yellow zone, and so on and so forth. But if you see, they are complementing and supplementing each other. Yeah. Right? For example, you take blue zone and the uh, uh, yellow zone. Now, these uh, blue uh, corporate world who have, uh, you know, will be using, uh, uh, say, producing very big things, right? They will be getting their inputs from these smaller ones, right? Okay, so the smaller words will also thrive and they will be the reason for the bigger world to survive, yeah. right, to work upon. Yeah. Same Absolutely. way if you see the uh, green. Mm -hmm. Now, the green is definitely talking about uh, two aspects. We are talking very clearly. Uh, we are talking of the environment. When we talk of the environment, we talk of the physical environment. We talk of the human environment. Okay. So we are taking care of that. Now, green is basically talking of more of ethics. So that shows very clearly that our society uh, will be more prone towards ethics now and uh, a social sense of responsibility will not be confined only to, uh, you know, uh, the places where people work but it will flow down even to the individual level. So exactly. what we see is a scenario is emerging. Even if you don't want to be ethical, you have to be ethical, right? You can't survive because if you are doing something, your industry is, your work is uh, affecting adversely the environment, then very naturally, your industry cannot survive because resources will get depleted, right? Absolutely. So in order for the resources to be there, you have an inflow and you can produce something, you have to be ethical and all that. So the technology has given us what religion used to talk ages back, that one has to be responsible and all that. Technology has made it more clear in a very rational way to us that we have to be uh, conscious of environment. We have to take care of others' happiness, others' jobs and all that. Then and only then your jobs, your happiness, your life is secure. So it's a very wonderful scenario, uh, which is emerging because of the technology. And, and you completely got me there because I was about to say this, that this is not something to be fearful about or to dread uh, because this is getting us into a very uh, different uh, place because it is going to help us understand uh, life in, in a very different fashion because uh, 
we have played games you know sometime back there was this pokemon and everybody got hooked on to pokemon because it used some somebody played a april uh, fools day joke and uh, in the augmented reality world we were trying and figuring out where these uh, pokemons are and we were clicking them so it gets us into a zone where for some time we detach we detach from worries we detach from our normal life and we go into a world that is created by technology right and technology is the is also there are bains and boons for both because here somebody would come up and say and raise their hand ma'am but our parents tell us too much of screen time is bad but here you are talking and sitting and and talking about technology but it is a balance that we need to strike it is harnessing the goodness of it like how sir very rightly said that uh, all the worlds complement each other they are all interconnected they are all modular in their own rights because if the bigger corporate uh, uh, organization is outsourcing to the yellow world the yellow world will also thrive the yellow world also will have ethics around it right so it's a very beautiful scenario and if we take out the beauty from the scenario then see the the green that we talked about so imagine the last job on this the rewilder it is about creating a beautiful scenery uh, taking care of environment having a planet where we can at least breathe nicely and exist nicely so these are all the kinds of jobs jobs that will be created so for that we need to have the relevant knowledge so uh, moving on let's see now for uh, somebody so if if in the audience we have students who are already in university or if we have parents watching this whose uh, children are going to be going into uh, uh, you know uh, college so for everybody we can see the present scenario of jobs and what will be the emerging trend so that they can act at least acquaint their uh, children or their peers or their colleagues about the newer kind of jobs that would be emerging so if we take the present stem possibilities i, I mean there were like three four major jobs that we were told doctor engineer lawyer okay so we knew uh, that those were the jobs that existed if you took science so uh, or you could become a scientist or a researcher mathematician okay banker we knew all of those jobs professors and lecturers but now when we look at the future stem possibilities they are endless in engineering we have uh, different kinds of engineering petroleum is really topping the charts it's like one of the most sought after engineering program peace engineering we have then a person who takes physics could become a nanotechnologist i would i would like to say something over here though petroleum engineering is uh, be the future but in the near future maybe uh, petrol would be replaced by the unconventional sources of energy so another field is emerging and india is taking a lead in that uh, mm -hmm. right our prime minister said very clearly by 2030 we will phase out uh, this uh, and uh, recently we had a vehicle uh, by toyota and uh, that was put i mean uh, inaugurated or what should i i shouldn't use the word inaugurated was introduced to the market by our uh, transport uh, and road minister mr gadkari now this vehicle is going to run on ethanol and by the way brazil is already doing right their 80% are on that it will be it will have the facility to run on ethanol it will have the facility to run on petrol it will have the facility to run on electricity mm -hmm. right exactly. Uh, so uh, and when we say very clearly so a new field of automation a new field of fuel a new research and uh, uh, india now is going to produce solar panels of its own right so far we have been importing and uh, we are going to use our solar resources resources to the hilt and uh, natural resources use would be there more than the petrol but i am very much touched by the new field you have mentioned is peace engineering all right everyone wants to be at peace all right though because of competition 
we end up creating stress for ourselves and others, right? But here is coming a new field and that we are talking to be engineers, that how you are able to engineer the peace itself, right? And it's very similar to the principle of Jainism, you know, live and let live or coexistence and yeah. collaboration. Collaboration is, is going to be the key word. Yeah. The key word is going to be the collaboration and those people who cannot work with others, who cannot understand the emotions of others, who cannot understand themselves, they are going to be a misfit in the new future scenario. Yes. So, so those were golden words. So basically, mm -hmm. uh, pull up your sleeves and, and identify your limitations and, and where you are resisting. So if you're resisting to uh, you know, adapt yourself, then it's, it's time we look at that and we start adapting. So also, sir, when you said uh, et ethanol and all, smart cabs are already doing the rounds in Delhi, you know, and, and they are already there. You need to book them in advance. So we are seeing changes coming about and in a nicer way. Yeah. So, so and data is big. Okay. We, we have heard quite a lot about it. I think everybody on this uh, platform uh, attending this would be knowing what data has value for in today's time. Number crunching you know, actuaries, uh, doing risk management, you know, we have a blockchain developer. So all these standalone uh, technologies are going to be taking over every aspect uh, from, you know, like how, uh, how Sir mentioned the transport to uh, medicine, to actually the parking area being managed individually without uh, the people who give us tickets. It is going to take over every place where human intervention was. Um, and we already heard in the video about, you know, how AI will be enabling, uh, 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 you know, predicting the diseases. So, and metallurgists, geochemists, toxicologists, like there were so many times in during the pandemic, we heard that all the researchers of the AIMS were put together, like, you know, how they spoke about they all got together and they were figuring out because that was the red planet, immediate solution. If they wouldn't have gotten together, we wouldn't have had the uh, shot, the vaccine ready. So if it is playing a big role in, in every department. So more STEM uh, possibilities could be. See, we had, we know there were software engineers, cloud architects and all. But now we also would be having an epidemiologist. Okay, so this is something which, you know, uh, everywhere the scientists were sitting and, and studying the virus and the virus strain and what you could be predicting with that. And uh, so when Sir mentioned solar panels, we already have an alternative energy installers and technician job available, right? And yeah, forensic scientists, we knew about it, but it is also happening in a big way because now law is also embracing technology. Uh, cryptographer and investment analyst. A uh, fantastic job, which is the field which is emerging is Marin, uh, you know, biologist. Uh, biologist. Yeah. Yeah. You see, uh, uh, like C is a rich resource, very rich resource and all that. So, so far we have tapped the C resources. Uh, we had been only concentrating on the, uh, you know, resources which are available to us on the solid rocks and all right? That means geo resources. But now we will be going to marine resources and we are going beyond uh, to resources in the space. So, uh, uh, you know, we are talking of space uh, physicists, etc. So what we see over here is uh, this. And uh, uh, what we see over here is a cryptographer. Now, we had never thought of these uh, currencies, cryptocurrencies and all that, but they are in vogue, they are happening, they are affecting us, right? And, uh, uh, you know, this um, uh, uh, beta chain people are the one who are responsible for this. So this is what exactly what we see is that future is going to be very different. The currency is going to be very different. The way uh, our health would be taken care of very different. The way we will look at, the way we will do, uh, uh, take care of enjoyment also will be very different. Oh yes, absolutely. Right? 
Yeah. Yeah, venue, yeah. Venue, uh, venue, venue. Reality and so on and so forth would be there. So tourism is going to be very different. Yes. Uh, yeah. So when you mentioned marine biologist, you know, there's this everybody should actually take this down and they should they should go and look up this uh, marine biologist. He's uh, uh, Jason Declare uh, Taylor. And he has uh, created around the world 11 to 12 underwater sculpture parks. And uh, this is uh, the, the sculptures that he creates have a certain pH neutral cement, which actually uh, helps uh, algae and fungi spawn uh, uh, on it. And it is creating a, a diverse marine life. You know, it is again reviving the marine life. So people are very conscious. They are a new field, of, a new field of tourism also. Exactly. Right. I was okay. about to say in Mexico, they have opened it, you know, Cancun, they have opened it for tourism. So they go only to see these sculptures and they're beautiful. And with the way uh, uh, the algae and all have started acting on it, they've transformed into something else, you know, what they were before and how they were lowered in, onto the seabed and now what they look like. So amazing, amazing uh, possibilities. Now we looked at STEM. So far, STEM. people are only going for the scuba, you know, scuba diving, dives, and all that. But now it is going to be very different, right? Yeah. They'll be going in, a, uh, maybe in, a, you know, what do you call it, submarine, and mm -hmm. taking around and seeing through the glass the world which has been uh, differently created, right? Yeah. Right. So we just looked at the uh, science uh, possibilities. Now let's look at technology. So when we see uh, how technology has suddenly created a lot of business solutions with, with all its uh, you know, latest innovations, like we, we know that game design um, is, is doing the rounds, how uh, we have every kind of digital marketing happening. Like, the, the way uh, it is infiltrating every social media. So there are hundreds of jobs that are being created. So because of the newer movies, you know, the Bollywood movies have also taken in a big way the VFX effect, sound effects, you know, Brahmasra is one of them. And uh, how uh, very recently, you know, the uh, NFT artists and facilitators have come up, you know, so uh, cloud architect we already know about and and cyber security is one area where it has uh, shown maximum progress and growth you know how uh, you can figure out now which area the crime is is happening in and how the drones are coming and helping in that particular thing because that is also technology driven right so these are going to be our business solutions so when when we speak about drone we can also see now that how uh, we are already a step closer in uh, drones being used for deliveries also, you know, for medical deliveries and, and other, other things. So this is the new creative business solution, which uh, we are currently looking at. I think, Kiran, ma'am, you are saying yes, something. Yes, yeah. ma'am. So thank you for introducing these concepts, ma'am. And as you mentioned, user interface, user experience, digital marketer, cloud solution, and artificial intelligence, I would like to say uh, KR Mangalam University as a progressive university has its collaboration with the industry itself. As I said earlier, KR Mangalam University offers BTEC in computer science and engineering with AI and ML in collaboration with IBM and Symmetrics. In addition to that, we have CSC with specialization in cloud computing and also full stack development in association with Sabia. Also, we have taken care of CSC program with specialization in user experience and user interface in association with Imagine XP. We also have collaboration with Siemens for mechanical engineering and automotive designs and electrical vehicles. So as we see, all the future skills are already in the curriculum and which will help our students to be a long life learner and also help them to be future ready. So over to you, ma'am. Uh, may, I, may I take over in between, if you yes, don't mind? Please, right? yes, so uh, uh, those who might be thinking, what is UX, what is UI and all that. So uh, for, for their benefit, I like to add uh, very clearly that uh, actually uh, this, uh, you know, 
user uh, interface UI is actually that. Uh, is the design of user interfaces for machines and softwares such as computers, home appliances, mobile devices, and you know other electronic devices we use uh, with the focus of maximizing their usability, okay? And to create a better kind of a user experience. So in computer uh, or in software design, user interface uh, design primarily would focus on information architecture. I'm giving you a new field altogether and KR Mangalam is already taking care of it, you know. So it is the process of building, you know, interfaces that uh, uh, clearly communicates to the user what is important. So UI design refers to actually the uh, uh, graphical, uh, uh, you know, uh, designs, uh, which, uh, you know, tell what is important UI, right? And uh, this way we are creating a new kind of uh, uh, job scenario very clearly. And uh, since this new job scenario is going, everybody is interested to use the, suppose a new uh, device comes in the market, how to use it to the maximum and all that. So how to, that they, uh, these engineers would architect the information in a manner and will make it available to you through graphics so that you can understand it better and you use it to the, nowadays, whenever a new thing comes, we think, oh, pata nahi kaise karenge. You know, how would I do? How would I use it? And all that, like Puna Mem was saying, when the pandemic started, the teachers had this thing, oh, right? But when they tried, right, they took the risk, they had courage, right? And they learned. And now what we see is a new word scenario is emerging in the teaching learning process, which is hybrid world. You are together also face to face and you are using technology as we are using today. So uh, we are giving you cloud computing where you'll be creating cloud solutions. You know, you'll be architect to that. We are, uh, uh, you know, giving you an edge by introducing, uh, you know, uh, digital marketing, right? Uh, uh, so that the uh, students who are doing BBA or BCom, they are different. They are ready to enter into the workforce the moment they leave the university and are future ready as well, at least for next five years. Whereas uh, PwC, uh, you know, that uh, video said uh, actually, <laughs> Don't don't think even five in, uh, five years. Think only six months that you have skills, you know, ready skills for you to survive only for six months. And if you have to survive further, you have to learn those skills, right? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Now, you. Yeah. Puna, so. Yes, and I think ma'am already mentioned what Kian Mangalam is doing for AI and ML. And everybody is actually talking about AI and ML and IoT, you know, Internet of Things. But see, actually, why we are stressing so hard on you and you, the future of careers, uh, because our new education policy of 2020 actually says, and you know, if we are wise enough to understand and realize that literacy around numeracy numbers will be needed, whether you are in whichever profession. The multilinguistic aspect and power of language, basically communication will be needed, whether you are on a, a desk job, a standalone job, but you will have to have this aspect because of now what we are going to see as the skill sets and a multidisciplinary disciplinary holistic education, because we can't say that, okay, we will stay a lawyer and not uh, marry technology uh, or not marry communication and lawyers need communication they cannot do without communication right so a multidisciplinary and they also need need physical and mental well-being so it is a, a a combination of the best approaches for oneself going uh, into us into an arena where 
we can probably have another uh, pandemic, God forbid, but we have to be prepared, right? So, NEP has foreseen many things and all that. So they have come out with revolutionary ideas about what the universities would be. So they have categorized the academic universities who will solely concentrate on academics. And they have uh, also thought of research universities whose focus will be more on research. And, all that. and it is felt that it may be of any kind of university, but the university <coughs> has to be multidisciplinary. Yes. Right. And uh, that multidisciplinary also uh, the new education policy has come with a very innovative idea, though uh, it talks very clearly that uh, uh, the student would have a choice to create his or her yeah. own curriculum. Yeah. Like uh, it's not that the fixed uh, subjects which a university offers, I have to study that only. Now I have a choice. I can choose, uh, I want to study this subject, this subject, this subject. And this is possible only when multidisciplines are being taught in that university. So uh, by the way, I want to add over here, we are a multidisciplinary university uh, running around 13 uh, schools uh, with us, right? And uh, we are very proud to say that we have already given this choice to our students, right? Yeah. Uh, to elect their own uh, subjects, uh, you know, at least one subject, one paper they can choose every semester. I think Kiran ma'am would like to say something about it. Uh, what are the electives available? Yes, sir. So KR Mangalam University offers open electives for first year students so they can choose from any subject like they can uh, if they are commerce student but they can choose from fundamentals of artificial intelligence they can choose subject like fashion design and development they can choose basic concepts and thoughts in education if they want to pursue or if they want to know about more so they can have these subject choices so they can choose and can learn about more so what a great opportunity, you know, uh, that's available over here. Now over to Punana. Thank you. And then, uh, so we've seen technology, we've seen science, we can also see what arts and, and we've, we've seen engineering and mathematics also. So now let's just come to humanities and see how there are some emerging careers here also, because uh, anybody who would be taking humanities would say, well, I do not really need technology. I can do without it. But but there are careers that you have which will need you to integrate technology. Yeah, I, I would say who can avoid technology? Even a person who comes to deliver uh, us food right, from any job is, is using technology. Using technology, right. right. Uh, this, yeah. Uh, this phone is nothing but technology, technology. So, and nobody is without phone nowadays. Yeah. I think practically 80% of our population is using phone yeah. and that too smart ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we had uh, careers which we are all very uh, aware of like graphic design and you know UI and UX we've already spoken about in great details, fashion designing, photography. Like photography also has seen a um, drastic change. Who would know uh, the photographers with, you know, their, their paraphernalia, tripod, and, you know, the, the kind of big cameras with lenses would be shifted into a smartphone, having the same pixel. Uh, and, you know, they had to uh, uh, adapt to that technology. So it's a fast moving world where you know an iphone 5 has now become obsolete because we have 14 with us so so yeah so and then in business education all of these law and public policy we have we saw that these are existing but what are the future careers so the future careers are like how sir just mentioned there was a course and strategic in the in the pwc video we saw strategic thinking skills so uh, those, even though artificial intelligence is taking over, you know, uh, Elon Musk promised that he's making a chip and he will make it by 2025 and implant it in the head and people are going to become physically uh, more active and, and more empowered and more uh, wise and aware. But will they be even able to think like humans really do? There is one thing that humans will have uh, 
autonomy over or supremacy over. So a digital marketing strategist role will not go out of the window, right? It will stay. Uh, likewise, we will have archivists and data linguists. Okay, these are because we are uh, now going to be one world. So we have to integrate. Uh, professional economist is not going to disappear. Uh, analysis, even though there is enough data given, the analysis will still need to be uh, overseen. And, uh, and the actuary actually does that. Then the banking sector, sector data analyst and a financial planner. These are some of the jobs that uh, with economics comes because economy economics has now also been added to the STEM uh, uh, department and then the equity analyst job. So even, even if you are choosing geography, history, you know, for your undergrad, uh, like Hauser said, you can have a core elective you can you can merge it with like like how liberal arts is doing you know you take your base uh, program uh, your your degree that you do in one discipline but you can always have a minor to fall back on so the minor that you are choosing to fall back on should be something which will help you uh, carry on with your so called professional career for some years while you will start building side by side your skill sets mm. so, so this... i'd like to yeah. add one point over here uh, you see our bcom is not a simple bcom on us now uh, we have a collaboration with national stock exchange academy okay? wow right so what they are doing is they are preparing our students simultaneously to be our investment manager right so as you said to be a financial planner to be a, a analyst right so here is something we are already doing for the uh, our students by having a collaboration with different kind of industries and it is not confined to the stream of sciences or engineering but we have a collaboration for humanities, we have collaboration for the word of uh, commerce and management, right? Very nice. So also if we can see that, you know, the advertisements that keep doing the rounds, they, uh, White Hat, I believe, has uh, created a coding program for school children. Now, uh, they do not need to wait till they come in grade 11th to choose coding, learning, Python, Java, and the likes. They are actually coding when they are young enough. So their reasoning skills, their, their uh, skills of uh, logical uh, understanding, and you know, scientifically, they are getting trained or before they are supposed to be learning that particular subject. So the world and curriculum in schools also, not alone in universities, the schools are taking care of all of these things. So, uh, so this is a, we are preparing, the schools and the universities are preparing uh, for a change and for the mindset and the education to change accordingly, you know. I would so, like to say if the university is not preparing, it will become obsolete and redundant in due course of time, right? So uh, the universities which are very progressive are live to uh, the changes which are occurring around them and are adapting and are flexible, right? The adaptability and flexibility thing is very important. They are the ones who are going to survive, otherwise not. Right, right. So uh, this gets us to ask a very important question. What should you bet your skills on? So first and foremost, before we even go there, we should do a quick uh, checkup on the skills that we possess. So uh, I'm, I'm requesting all of uh, you all who are attending, uh, create a list, create a list of the skills you think you have. Are you good at uh, the Microsoft suite? Are you good at Python? Do you think you have uh, stock information and knowledge? Do you do cryptocurrencies? Are you good at Bitcoin? Like what is your skill set good with? Do you think you are a very good orator? You have communication skills. And then when you have written all of them down, it will be such a beautiful thing to see that they, how they are getting aligned and in tune with what the world needs. So uh, what we would be needing in future for being future ready will be first and foremost, we've spoken today only about digital skills. 
So we will need digital training opportunities post the pandemic. Then we need upskilling. This also we have sp spoken about that um, every time a new technology comes, understanding of it, getting trained in that will never disappear. So managers will need to keep going for training sessions. So upskilling is also one thing, which means you have to become very uh, tuned to the fact that you will be constant learners. We have to have this thing in life that, okay, after master's, I will not give up on my education or on my, on my uh, books. I will have to be constantly uh, taking short courses, certifications to keep moving ahead. That is very important. And the most important is the soft skills. If these are lacking, then definitely the up, the digital and the upskilling will not be able to help me. So obviously, human mind is the only mind that can do problem solving. Self-management and working with people. So both of us, like Ashok sir and myself, we were talking only about collaboration. Collab for collaboration, we need to have interpersonal skill sets. So these Skills are very important for being future ready. And uh, with that, uh, I think we... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, okay. So ma'am, as you talk about these skills, uh, this makes me ask you about what is the role of universities in it? And how are they, you know, uh, are they gonna help our young generations to move ahead? Wow, that gets me to a very nice, uh, you asked a very important question because Everybody who's attending this should know the role of schools and universities. If we talk of universities, uh, see, we just spoke that the land, the landscape is evolving. Okay, uh, it is evolving to an extent that our curriculum is also changing. So the youth that needs some kind of newer learning, they will get that learning where they were. They are going to get learnings of those newer technologies and newer programs only inside universities, like how you have only told me that this is happening, this is happening, collaborations within universities are happening. You are getting, you are giving certifications, you're authorizing the individual to have that skill set to take that job. So the, the first and the foremost important job of a university is to endorse the individual, the student, that he is capable, he's eligible for that particular job, right? Then comes a myriad of other things that the university does. It offers you internships or internship opportunities. It gives you a peek inside the giants of that particular uh, discipline, you know, because you learn from them, from their lectures, okay? You see how uh, their practical exposure and their experience uh, can translate into your understanding around that particular discipline. And then universities also help you sometimes with job opportunities. And they not only strengthen your uh, theoretical base, they offer you practical uh, exposure. So universities are grounding these days and they are revising their curriculum. Like how I have only heard, you know, they're revising their curriculum. They're creating newer uh, degrees, diplomas, certificates, catering to every need of the student for that particular moment, right? So uh, I think that is what university is doing. But uh, Ashok sir, if you would want to add what uh, KR Mangalam in particular as a university is playing as a role for, for the youth, for younger generation, you can, you are most welcome to add, sir. Uh, well, uh, as I said, uh, we are a very, uh, you know, uh, university which are future centric. That doesn't mean we ignore present. We take care of your present and we make you future ready as well. Now, uh, we, we understood that we have, uh, you know, uh, soft skills as well, the technical skills as well as the digital skills are concerned that we have already taken care of by you know having collaboration with the industry itself so that there is no lag there is no gap right and the industry itself comes because when we talk of collaboration we will give you uh, better understanding what exactly is the collaboration and how do we go about and what it does to you now, regarding the soft skills, 
uh, ma'am very specifically talked about is uh, you need to develop not only uh, the interpersonal skills, but you need to have intrapersonal also. That means self-management techniques. You must need to understand yourself. So if you see, ma'am, you only have uh, conducted many sessions for our uh, students uh, on this uh, very uh, field itself, right? So we constantly are working to help our students understand themselves first, right? Like, for example, you know, even when you come to us for uh, admission, we conduct a psychoanalysis test, right? Can we try to, we, we will help you understand very scientifically, look, this is your strength, right? So that you choose the right path. Say. And when you are with us, we are creating very special opportunities for you so that uh, you can constantly keep on uh, searching your own self because the search is not only confined to one test or one time and all that, that this is what I have, this is my potential. Our potential was never known in COVID times. We understood our real potential, you know. Okay, a real potential as a human being to fight such a big kind of uh, uh, epidemic came to the forefront, like India took a lead in terms of production of vac uh, vaccine. Nobody had thought like that. Nobody had thought like that, right? So this is how. So we give you constant opportunities. Now you might be wondering, how do we give you constant opportunities to work with others, right? collaborative exercises, as well as to understand you better. So first of all, we have a very wonderful society called Chetna Society. And this society conducts many programs around the year uh, for uh, uh, which are, you know, centered around various themes on personality development, understanding your personality, even uh, talks about self-compassion, right? There is a very special uh, uh, a series of uh, uh, workshops they carry out about how to love yourself also apart from loving others. Then uh, regarding, uh, uh, this is our second thing which is uh, 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 there in our university is that we have uh, around more than 20 clubs and the number is not limited. Suppose new set of students join they have a different set of interests to pursue. So we give them a choice to create a new kind of a club. That's another aspect. So we have a range of clubs apart from the, uh, you know, uh, usual clubs of dramatics and all. We have Reuters club, right? As I said, we have Chetna club. Uh, okay, and uh, we have clubs uh, uh, regarding technology also. You have that people who are into drones and all that. They have made their own clubs, robotics clubs and all that. So you have a plethora of uh, clubs where you can, uh, you know, uh, what you call, uh, take care of or pursue your interests, right, in a very organized manner. Now, Another aspect of this, because uh, it talks about self-management is very important aspect, time management. So we give you uh, our uh, strategies, uh, you know, teaching strategies are not just confined to classrooms and all that. We carry out uh, projects and those projects are multidisciplinary, right? Okay, so you have very automatically exposure to, uh, you know, other, co uh, other branches of knowledge. And while carrying out these projects, when you're working together, you have an opportunity to understand different kinds of people. Now, university also, or institute also, you have very selected people because those who are with a certain background of uh, you know uh, education and all they are there 
So we carry whatever you learn, whatever research you do in the university to the community. So we have an outreach program and all that. There you really understand very clearly the human emotions, how do they accept the new things and how to really transmit. So your communication skills, your language, your, your need to understand the local language right, is very important. They won't understand English, right? Okay, but they will understand in their own dialect. So how to understand the human, uh, you know, uh, nature, that's another opportunity. So we provide you many opportunities that way to develop these soft skills. So, uh, and uh, since we carry out many projects along with the industry, so you uh, understand uh, that word also, how to communicate in that word also, how to develop interpersonal skills, what are needed in the, that sector also are taken care of. So it's a unique way where that technology, technical uh, inputs, new skills are taken care of through various kinds of collaboration with the industry. Uh, but the soft skills, which are, you know, I would say more important than the other skills now because they help you. Ultimately, you have to deal with human beings. So we take care of, in fact, our future, one of the webinars we are going to con uh, conduct is on emotional intelligence only, right? So uh, we are really helping our students to be more emotionally mature. Yeah. yeah. So that is how we are. That is actually the need of the art. That is uh, very, very important because emotional intelligence is uh, needed more than anything uh, in the soft skill department. You very rightly said so. So, uh, both and social so, and emotional. And emotional, yes. Uh, and you uh, said one very nice thing that, you know, with these clubs, uh, they're, uh, they are honed very properly because they, they get some kind of uh, mentoring, you know, which otherwise in a standalone environment or over uh, the remote learning is not possible. Like a uh, teacher cannot ever be out, even though if it's an online system or a hybrid education model that we are going to be following later. The, the traditional uh, teacher, student, uh, disi mentor, disciple spirit is going to help them in life because lessons from the mentor are very, very important for the, for the you know, student. So, uh, yeah, having said that... Uh, uh, we will be talking about mentoring in a, uh, you know, when we come to the university presentation because we have that unique mentor and mentee program in our university. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, ma'am, i like to say there's a question from one participant uh, and he wants to ask, esports coach don't have a good pay scale in India, but they have a very high pay scale and bonuses on winning tournaments in regions like Northern America, European Union, and Europe and Middle Eastern and Africa. So what's your take on that, ma'am? Uh, I think it's not a question. I think he is just trying to tell us that this particular program is not as uh, developed or viable or lucrative here in India as it is uh, in, in that part. So um, it, it has its own merits, you know, depending also on the way uh, the continents are and, and how it is taken in a, in a context. So these, uh, these, Esports and you know coaching uh, virtually uh, is something which we have not really seen happening here in, in in India in a big way. Yeah, so so obviously this has yet to develop. It is in its nascent stage. It has to see uh, some more. Uh, we have to uh, give it some more time in order to you know uh, let our athletes or our our uh, our you know sports people. Uh, make it to international uh, arena more more than what they are currently doing so that this particular field also develops in equal quantum so um, i think he was giving us a very important insight there yeah. so thank you I like, I, I like to add to his insight very wonderful insight thank you so much for sharing with us uh, you see the thing is this that you said e and e is not confined to india 
So your coaching is not confined to India and all that. Second thing is this, that uh, whenever you are a pioneer, as a pioneer, you'll have to struggle a bit, you know. But once you establish yourself and all, right, then sky is the limit, yeah. right? So every field, every profession, uh, few years are really struggling years. And once you establish yourself, then you can really build on that, you know. So uh, first is don't confine yourself because E is not confined to a particular territory. Territory It is a global phenomenon. So mm -hmm. your reach is towards that. Uh, during the pandemic time, uh, I mean, a uh, few, few, few days back only, I met one of the teachers and she was teaching in uh, GK2 branch of KR Mangalam schools. So uh, she said that I've left the school and I was a little shocked. I said, what happened? Why did you leave? She said, sir, I'm now used a cloud school, right? So my reach is the whole world, world. right? So this is the way we need to look at it because technology is really opening the horizons. Yes. Okay. There's another observation or question coming up. Can you please see? Yes. Um, so, ma'am, we have another question from Jia. So, mm -hmm. she asks, can CA profession ever get outdated? So, ma'am, what's your views on that? Uh, I think uh, G Jia is planning to take, uh, take on this particular profession. That's why I can see a little bit of a worried concern over there. Uh, no, Jia, I don't see uh, CA, that's personally my take, I don't see this uh, going out anytime soon. It, this profession is not going to be automated as fast and disappear. So if you are planning to step into it, you can definitely take it up because uh, it it's uh, we can we can say in a way that its job profile probably will differ its structuring will differ how it is going to pan out in the future will differ maybe it is uh, going to change its current uh, uh, scenario but it is a job that is not going to be done only by machines yeah if that is what you are wanting to understand Okay. So it will it will not become extinct like other uh, front facing jobs will. Because uh, see, fi uh, finances are going to remain with us. We can't, uh, you know, we are not going to enter into the world of bartering, you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We are going to advance further. So even if the Bitcoin comes, it's a currency, right? Mm -hmm. And the accounting would re be required. <laughs> You will definitely need to account. And CA is one professional who helps us in that only, right? So don't worry. Only thing I would say, it's nature. Uh, it's form and will change. The form will change. Yeah. Do we have so, any other queries? No, ma'am. Okay. So thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us and for this knowledgeable session. Thank My you pleasure. so much. My thank you for having me. Thank you, Ashok sir. Thank you, Kiran ma'am. I have your commitment, so I'd just like to take, take, take your leave. I would not be able to stay on for the, for the video. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you so much for joining us, and we look forward for uh, such kind of sessions more, especially on emotional intelligence, right? Which thank is you. your forte, right? <laughs> so <laughs> we would love to have one more session like this, one and more beyond, you know? right uh, thank you sir. and thank you so much i hope uh, uh, this session uh, was really a session which made us understand the future work scenario and the planning begins from now, now. okay right thank and you, since you are, thank you yeah and thank since you, you are planning so it's very important to base the planning on information Whatever you plan has to be informed planning, okay? So to help you in that, I'll request Kiran Ma'am yes, to sir. take us through a, a, a virtual round of the university. Yes, Sorry, I'm not sure.
wonderful glimpse, ma'am, uh, for giving us uh, a total idea of how the KRM campus looks like, all right? Full of greenery, very full, yes. so uh, spread over to such a big area, right? Yeah. And now I will be very happy if you could take us that apart from the wonderful infrastructure, what courses yes, we are offering and how do yes. we offer? Sure, sir. So over to you, ma'am. Yes, sir. So KR Mangalam University is the fastest growing higher institution in Gurugram, India. So it's a pioneering institution of higher education in Haryana, established in 2013 under the Haryana's Private Universities Act. So we have more than 3,000 students here with us. We have more than 12 schools, and we also have more than 150 plus faculty members with us. So the area spread over 26 acres of lush green campus with ultra modern amenities. We also have industry integrated curriculum with international exposure, and also have tie-ups with various foreign universities and institutions of high repute. We also provide AC transportation facilities across all over Delhi and Sia. We have fully furnished and centralized AC hostel facilities for students also. We have more than 65 plus UG and PG programs from where a student can choose. We have air conditioned classrooms equipped with audio visual aids. We also have full time faculty members with rich industry experience. We have fully functional high-end laboratories across various disciplines. We have interdisciplinary project-based learning as well. So we also have record placements year after year with over 400 plus regular tech readers in various disciplines. We also provide scholarships, which is available up to 100% for meritorious and deserving students. So these are the courses which are being offered uh, in Kyan Mangalam University. So starting from engineering and technology, we have BTEC, BTEC in CSE with AI and ML with academic support of IBM and Symmetrics. We have BTEC in mechanical engineering and automotive designs with academic support of Siemens. We have BCA with specialization in artificial intelligence and data science with academic support of Symmetrics and IBM. We have BSc Honours in Computer Science with academic support of IBM. We have BSc Honours in Data Science. We also have BSc Honours in Cyber Security. We offer MTech, MCA and MTech part-time as well for the person who are still working. So after that, we have School of Management and Commerce and it, we have BBA in HR, Marketing, Finance, International Business and Travel. We also offer BBA with specialization in business intelligence and analytics with academic support of Symmetrics. In addition, we also started BBA integrated plus MBA program from this year onwards with specialization in business intelligence and analytics with the academic support of Symmetrics only. So we have BCom honors with the academic support of NSC. We have BCom program. We have MBA with the academic support of IBM. We have MBA part-time as well. And we also offer MBA. So in School of Basic and Applied Sciences, we have BSc Honours in Physics, Chemistry, Maths with assistance in Civil Service exam preparation. We have MSc Honours in Physics, Chemistry, Math, MSc Honours part-time as well. In School of Education, we have BA, PLA, MA in Education. In School of Architecture and Design, we have Bachelor of Architecture. We have Bachelor of Interior Design. We have Bachelor of Designs. We have BSc in interior design. We have BA in fashion design as well. So in journalism and mass communication, we have BA in journalism and mass communication and MA in journalism and mass communication. In school of legal studies, we have BBA LLB honors, BA LLB honors, BCom LLB honors, LLB honors, and we also offer LLM of one year. In school of humanities, we have BA MA in English, BA honors in psychology, BA Honours in Chinese, BA Honours and MA in Economics, BA Honours in Digital Humanities. In School of Medical and Allied Sciences, we have B Pharmacy, M Pharmacy, D Pharmacy, PPT. We have BSc Honours in Operation Theatre Technique. We have BSc Honours in Dialysis Technique. We have BSc Honours in Medical Lab Technology, B Optometry with academic support of Dr. Shroff Charity Eye Hospital. 
In School of Hotel Management and Catering Technology, we have bachelors in Hotel Management and Catering Technology. In School of Agriculture Sciences, we have BSc honors in Agriculture. And lastly, we also have and we also offer doctoral program. That is, we have PhD in all the disciplines. So these are the various courses which are offered by Kyar Mangalam University. And I like to add that the academia and the industry experts sits together and they are constantly evolving new curriculum. And as you can see, our curriculum is updated every year as per the need of the industry. So these are the industrial collaborations. So I would like uh, Arora sir, if you share some valuable insights in that. So you are on mute, sir. Well, Kiran ma'am just explained us that uh, where all we have collaboration. So you name the course we have collaboration in. So we have collaboration actually with more than 100 industries and academic institutes of uh, higher learning. Uh, to name a few and how do we go about, uh, I like to uh, talk about, uh, though I had been uh, giving my inputs when uh, uh, Una Mem was uh, speaking about the future careers. Now, if you see, uh, you know, first thing what we do is, uh, uh, as Kiran Mem said, we sit with the, uh, you know, uh, industry leaders. And this sitting is not only once, it is a regular feature of us. Okay. So regularly, uh, say every quarter or six months, we are meeting a particular industry to understand how it is changing. And then we uh, reflect on the present curriculum and then we update it. So every year our curriculum, so suppose those who have graduated out, right? They, if they revisit KR Mangalam, they will find altogether a different curriculum being taught. Now, uh, how do we teach? First is that there are certain papers which are like in other universities, right? Uh, or fundamental papers, they are taught by our own faculty. But those papers which are industry oriented, they are not taught by our faculty, they are taught by industry experts. So they only come to, they regularly visit us. So uh, every semester we have one or two papers for every course which is being taught by the industry expert. Right now, these courses which we have devised or certifications which we have devised along with the regular program has international, national as well as international accreditation because the industries we have chosen are like that. For example, Siemens, IBM, they have international presence. So if you qualify uh, 16, because you have to actually go, if you're doing engineering, you'll have to go through 16 papers by a particular industry with which we have collaboration. So you will be getting 16 credits too. And those credits are internationally acknowledged. That means what? Wherever you go across the globe, you will be given preference over the regular, uh, you know, aspirants. That's one aspect. Second aspect, which is very important is, uh, 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 your internship begins from day one in a way. For example, suppose you join us in the uh, mechanical engineer. Okay. Now, uh, we, we give mechanical engineering in automobiles. Now, Siemens are pioneers as far as uh, automation is concerned, especially regarding electrical vehicles. 
Okay. So they have uh, devised their own, uh, you know, they have evolved their own softwares. These softwares are very expensive. They are their company's prototype, right? So they are not available to others, but they are available to our students. So our students can, with those kind of softwares, can work under, uh, you know, simulated situations. Industry is coming to the, so you need not go to, you know, um, physically over there, but you have a software over here. Suppose you are, uh, <clears throat> want to suggest a particular change in a vehicle uh, to increase its efficiency, uh, say, you want to say the streamlining of the vehicle itself, you know. So uh, you can test it in the uh, software of the Siemens. You can understand uh, whether the suggestion you are giving would deliver the results you are thinking or not. If not, what kind of changes you really need to bring in the prototype you have developed. Such kind of facilities are not available in other uh, universities, if I can say like that, right? Because it is industry based completely. And, all that. and as I said in the um, NSC, National Stock Exchange uh, Academy, now you have a uh, exposure to their software. You will be doing actually uh, the analysis of the equity over there. You'll be predicting which equity would gain, which shares are going to progress, which are going to decline, what is there. So very practical and you will be a banker, uh, investor, so that you can, uh, sorry, investment manager, uh, you can guide based on practical knowledge you have acquired and you have uh, access to uh, this kind of uh, uh, softwares by them. And the experts from that industry would be coming regularly to give you inputs and all that, to teach you certain papers. They will, that's why it is called Academy, National Stock Exchange Academy. So there is a program attached to it. And I'm very happy to say that in North India, we are the only university which has collaboration with uh, National School uh, Exchange Academy and all that. So this way, uh, to, and we were talking about that lifelong learning, right? Acquiring new skills, updating yourself and all that. So we have a very special, uh, you know, uh, program uh, collaboration with LinkedIn Learning. So more than 15,000, because we know LinkedIn is a, a platform where professionals you know, join and all that. So professionals, uh, you know, uh, they, they conduct the courses, right? It means directly industry exposure. So more than 15,000 courses are available to you. Otherwise, you have to pay uh, hefty fees uh, if you do it uh, personally. But uh, since uh, we have a collaboration with LinkedIn Learning, so this facility is available free of cost. So along with your regular course, you can choose any uh, course you want to do and can pursue it online with the help of the professionals. Right? So this is how our collaboration takes place, number one. There is a lot of deliberation, updation of curriculum. We define the methodology. We discuss the projects our students would carry out, right? And the close cooperation of the academy, uh, faculty, academic faculty and the industry faculty, right? To ensure that you get the best possible skills, right? So next, yeah. please. Thank you, sir. So now uh, we also have e yantra robotics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is another collaboration, actually. So this collaboration is with the IIT Mumbai. See, we were talking about robotic club, right? And in uh, in our uh, you know this uh, 
exposure which we gave you, you might would have seen some of the students are working with drones and all that, you know. So here, uh, such kind of activities are uh, directly under the mentorship of the professors from IIT Mumbai. So uh, what we have ensured is that even if a student is not able to go to a very premier uh, institute, we bring the premier institute to the campus itself. Next, please. So these are the honorary distinguished professors. Uh, so basically, we have Mr. Mikram Atal, Professor Sunita Singh Sen Gupta. We have Dr. Shiv Kumar Kaushik, Professor Sudhan Raj, Professor Krishan Lang, Professor Jack Copeland, Mr. Vinod Sooth, Professor Sumanyu Satpati, Mr. Chandrahas Chaudhary, and Professor Anita Sharma. And they all have a uh, few degrees with them. And also they have international exposure. So after that, these are the innovative teaching pedagogy. So this is one of our smart ashrams. So this is one of the kind of innovations we do in our university. And as well as with that, we also have a smart dhaba in the university itself. This is the life beyond academics. So we have industry connect, we have mentor mentee programs, we have community connect, we have clubs and societies. So basically in industry connect, our students went or go to the industry itself and have the practical exposure of the real world business situations. We have mentor mentee program as well. So the distinguished mentors dedicately go extra miles to make the students best versions of themselves. We have community connect also, and we have more than 20 clubs and societies in our university where students can register themselves and can participate in the various cultural and sports event as well. So after that, uh, this is the international exposure. KR Mangalam University have its collaboration with these international universities like University of Florida, University of Houston, Middlesex University of London. So these are the international exposure of Kya Mangalam University. So after that, uh, these are the pl placement highlights of Kya Mangalam University. The highest package, which is 24 lakhs per annum has been offered from Kya Mangalam University. We have 400 plus visited recruiters. We have 600 plus total offers made till now. And we have 90% of the students placed. And the top recruiters of our university are PTM, Sun Pharma, KPMG, Medanta, India. So these are the top recruiters of Kya Mangalam University. These are the list of the recruiters of KRMU. Uh, here you can see we have HCL Technology, CPA Global, Global India Bulls. We also have AppStar, we have PTM, we have KJ. So these are the basically the recruiters of Kya Mangalam University. After that, these are the stages of admission process and it's a very simple and easy process to follow. Firstly, we will need the admission officer. Then you have to procure the application form. Then you can register with us. Then you should appear for the admission test. Then there you have to appear for a personal interview. And if you got selected, you can pay the fees and get admitted to the KR Mangalam University. So it's a very simple admission process we have. And this is the average fee structure. So you, as you can see, KR Mangalam University fees as compared to all the other universities. So we are charging very less in compared to all the private universities in Haryana, Delhi, UP, Punjab, Tadzhan, Bihar. So as you can see, KR Mangalam University is charging very, uh, we can say minimal and very justifiable fees. And these are the scholarships which have been offered by Kya Mangalam University. We offer deserving UG candidates a scholarship of up to 100%. We also fast track admission to those with 90% or above in the 12th. We also provide 15% scholarship for siblings. We have provided 15% scholarship for sports quota as well. We provide 15% scholarship for children of defense personnel. And we also provide special financial aid to students from KR Mangalam schools. So thank you so much. And we have a fast track program for those uh, as far as admission is concerned, for those who enter into the university entrance test nowadays, right? The centralized test, CVT. 
Okay, so thank you for uh, joining us and thank you, Aroda sir, for giving us some valuable insights of Kya Mangalam University. And thank you so much. Our special thanks to the guest speaker, Karen Ma'am. I think most important is to you all, the audience, right? Without you, we have no meaning, right? And my special thanks to my uh, behind the scene team, technical team uh, who had been, who constantly makes an effort to reach out to you and uh, to provide the best facilities so that there is uninterrupted uh, you know, a, a flow of information between you and, uh, and us. <clears throat> now, uh, I would say uh, uh, we are just a phone call away, right? You can note down our number. It is 011-488-4888, right? And uh, you can uh, call us. We will be very happy to personally receive you in the campus. So when you visit our campus, we will organize special, uh, you know, guided tour for you, but there will be time for you to have information of your own. You can meet any of our professors or deans to understand what exactly we do offer for a particular course or a particular stream. We also give you an opportunity to have a peep into our more than 20 labs, right? We give you a chance to have a feel of our sports facilities. You can visit the hostels. You can have something from the smart Dhaba, right? Most importantly, you can interact with the students and understand what all happens in the campus of KR Mangalam University. We look forward as to involve you as a family member, right? Because KRM believes like that only. And as per our motto, we are there to empower our youth to build a strong nation, right? So empowering the country by empowering the youth is our motto. Do come, do visit, see by yourself and have informed decisions. Thank you so much for being with us. We look forward for more meaningful such kind of sessions on topics which you keep on asking us that we want to know more about this topic. So we definitely ensure we bring you the best of the best experts and ensure that you understand whatever you want to. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much.